Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm now O2. And I hope you're doing well with all the stuff and etc. And that things are good. This is the beginning of the uh, duos videos. This is Duos Act 1. It's under the idea that we're only going to have one teammate as a human being. The other teammates will be bots. That's not to say that these two decks won't work together in the solo queue environment where you will end up having two human beings. Right? So if you don't want to play in a private lobby, you can play online with these decks and have two random teammates. But the thing that we can reliably get from bots is ammo. So with these decks, there's some crossover. The decks aren't super weapon specific necessarily, at least not most of them. So if you guys wanted to run the same gun, like you both wanted to run ARs, you could do that. We don't get any extra ammo cards in here. No extra ammo cards because we're just going to assume that the bots are going to give it to us. We're also skipping... Uh, on some of the decks, we're skipping extra stamina cards, like uh, Superior Cardio, in some instances, because the bots are going to provide us some nice cards over the long run. B bots will eventually have... Was it Inspiring Sacrifice, as well as Mandatory PT. So extra healing and stamina will typically be something that you get from the bots when things happen. And the bots will be nice meat shields and give you extra stamina. So we cut out a stamina card from some of these decks. Because we don't have to worry about it. The bots are going to give it to us. For Act, for act 1, we're going to have nades and damage. The thing about duos is that there's a couple of things that we need to achieve, right? We need to be able to kill mutations reliably. We need to have a little bit of healing to some extent. We need to have the cards necessary to beat the whatever mission. Most of them are movement-based missions, right? Crossing, Handyman, T5, things like that. So we're sort of condensing what is typically split between four players and the two players, and that's not the easiest thing to do. Keep in mind that neither of these decks are actually solo clutch decks. Where in the solo clutch decks videos, we have just deep pockets, grenades, and movement speed, and we just can basically beat the whole game that way. And play normally if we need to with teammates, but these decks are going to be a little more dependent on both players working together to overcome the difficulties of Nightmare Mode, and I think that makes sense, and that's what makes it fun. So, Duos Act 1. Player 1, nades and damage, hazard pay, double grenade pouch, looks totally normal. Notice that we don't have share the wealth. I don't know if you can play, I assume you can't play offline mode with a partner, you can't invite someone to a party, right? In offline mode, you get all the bots' monies, right, even in campaign mode. In online mode, that's not the case. And as far as I can tell, if you just share the wealth, you don't get the extra 200 copper from the bots transferred over to you. So both players will actually be running Hazard Pay because that's just going to net gain the most money. Hazard Pay is super reliable, nice and neat, and buttoning away. Great, great, great. Money, money, money. Then we get Double Grenade Pouch for killing mutations. Fleet of Foot on Blood Tunnel. We're preparing for the crossing. Cross Trainers. We're pre preparing for the crossing. Typically here we would get a third Stamina card. We would get like Superior Cardio, just the like very nice, flexible three cards. It's all you're going to need for running. We're cutting one of those cards out here because eventually we will want sort of three cards ish for abandoned when you're running up the mine shaft. But we're cutting that out because by the time you get to abandoned, you're going to have two mandatory PT cards provided by the bots. We'll just assume that, like, we'll just take that as just as good as uh, superior cardio. So instead, we'll, we'll squeeze in an extra card here. Offensive scavenger, I don't think is particularly great on the crossing. We squeeze it in so that by the time we get to Clean Sweep, it's ready to go, and we can still get Bomb Squad right on time. We pick up Bomb Squad here for our grenade deck just because uh, once you hit Clean Sweep, you're pretty much going to be getting ferocious mutations consistently. And Bomb Squad is going to allow you to one-shot. With, with a direct hit of the grenade, Bomb Squad will one-shot most of the Tallboy variants. It doesn't kill bruisers. If the tall boys have um, hardened, I think it's called, which uh, like gives them 75% res resistance to explosives, I think that's a monstrous trait. But either way, bomb squad will heck up the tall boys. If it doesn't directly kill them, they'll be super close to death, and you just gun them down. 
With this deck, I would recommend running either a sniper rifle or an AR. Up to you, total total preference. But the goal of this deck is to run grenades to kill mutations, and also to run a primary weapon that has a good time killing weapon, uh, killing mutations as well. It does good damage versus mutations as well. So we have a wide mouth magwell. This is a general. If you're running a sniper rifle, nice quality of life, extra DPS, etc. If you're running an AR, you're more flexible. The reload speed will help you kill the horde more reliably. And if you're running like the SCAR or the AK, you'll be reloading quite a bit because you only got 20 bullets and etc. Blah, blah, blah. So reload speed is a nice flexible way that we can increase our DPS towards mutation, but also increase our crowd control. Extra grenade pouch going into the barroom blitz so that you have an extra grenade for it with you so that when mutations show up, you blow them up. The only, the only issue, the issue with barroom blitz is that you want to get in your corner, you, you set up, you get your barbed wire or whatever set up. Dealing with the, with the zombies becomes relatively easy. It's just that when the mutations show up, that's when the, the jukebox gets destroyed or a tall boy pushes you out of your position and now the zombies are aggroing onto you. An extra grenade means one more instance where you can blow a tall boy up and not have to worry about it. Cold brew coffee. Nice, great, flexible card, extra reload speed, flexible for snipers, everything else. Swap speed, aim speed, great for snipers, great for pulling out your grenades in the nick of time and things like that. Reload drills for the same reason. Now we get silver bullets, and then confident killer. Silver bullets picked up on bad seeds, and confident killer going into Hell's Bells. I, I would love to put in... Like, if, if we were just running AR, I would replace Silver Bullets with Combat Training for the stumble potential, so that you can more reliably stumble Reekers. And that'll allow you to, stu you know, comfortably stumble Reekers when you're on bad seeds. I think my thought. When you're on bad seeds and you're holding out against the, the hordes on the nest, the best place to do, th do so, the best place to do so are those little sheds. Not very deep. And so when a Reeker shows up, you're going to feel the temptation. The temptation to use a grenade. But if you can reliably and comfortably stumble that Reeker, you know you can. Then you can save a grenade in that instance. And then we're only using our grenades to blow up tall boys. It takes a lot of strain. It takes a lot of pressure off of our grenade usage. Very, very, very nice. But we're running a sniper rifle. So if we're running a Phoenix or a Barret, preferably a Barret because of the stumble p potential... You don't really need combat training anyways because the bear is just, a, a, a good bear is going to stumble the reeker anyways, right? Without ex, without the need of combat training. So we pick up silver bullets. Keep in mind that extra bullet damage still plays a part in stumble chance or or dealing stumble damage. So either way, silver bullets very nice flexible card again. Sniper, AR, whatever you prefer, you, it goes either way. Now we get confident killer. Just safe damage. Nothing in particular here about Hell's Bells that we want Confident Killer for. Other than that, we just want damage and no side effects. And that's about it. No Patient Hunter, no no Glass Cannon, nothing like that. Just nice, safe, reliable damage that builds up over, op, builds up over time. Typically in the tunnel on, on Hell's Bells, you'll fight one or two mutations maybe before by the time you get to the semi truck you jump down into the semi truck area there's another two or three mutations maybe you do the horde event another two or three by the time you're getting past the turtle truck which you have to like the, the tow truck thing with it and it pulls it over and you jump down there's turtles everywhere i find that by the time you get you're getting to that point you're around 10 ish stacks of confident killer just nice, really nice. And you still got most of the level to go anyways, right? So Confident Killer triggers pretty reliably on Hell's Bells. Not a problem. Extra damage, no repercussion other than that. You have to build up to it. And now we get Surplus Pouches. Abandon is a map where... Oh, there's a lot of strain on your grenade usage because... You have to hold out at the infested house, hold out at the house again... Or hold out at the next house up the alleyway, and then you have the, the infinite horde on your way up. Things like that. So just an extra grenade to carry along. Keep in mind, too, we have Offensive Scavenger for almost the entire run. An Offensive Scavenger is really, 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 really nice on, like, uh, on uh, Clean Sweep. Or not Clean Sweep. It's really, really nice on Special Delivery, on the Diner. It's going to be really nice on Abandoned as well, because there's 
the gas station, the infested house, like the garage and the shed out, outside of the infested house, that second house up the alleyway, and then of course you approach the, the mine. Lots and lots of opportunity for offensive scavenger to trigger on abandoned. Really nice card to pick up here. And we'll always have pockets for it, pretty much. And we just get canned goods and well fed. Just extra health to go when you're going into Rolling Thunder. Extra health, extra grenades. With this deck, you're going to have at minimum five grenades. Keep in mind, too, that we don't have any extra grenade damage cards here. So, not that you need purple grenades. Though purple pipe bombs would be nice for Rolling Thunder. But you don't have to get them here, right? So, extra grenade upgrades are nice. But don't... Don't be super worried about it. Don't don't sacrifice anything to get to get blue grenades or purple grenades. Not that big of a deal. Just because between bomb squad, confident killer, you're gonna have just about enough grenades damage anyways with the grenades. So if you got green grenades, great. If you can afford blue grenades, that's awesome. Don't worry. Otherwise, don't worry about it. And then we just have extra health for rolling thunder so that you can hold your ground. For as long as you possibly can to buy time for the filled cannon user and etc now here is the other deck this is the support and use speed deck we have hazard pay but notice here utility scavenger utility scavenger when we get to the crossing and up until this point this player doesn't need to always be carrying a pipe bomb don't be worried about like always buying a pipe bomb for this deck and the nice thing about resurgence and blood tunnel at the very least, is that there is a decent amount of places for you to hold out. Good enough corners that you can get by without needing a pipe bomb. The only place you probably really want a pipe bomb is if you are uh, going through the swamp on Pain Train. Maybe you want to use a pipe bomb there. Pipe bomb there. But then even beyond that, after after that on Pain Train, the, tra the blue train car holdout for the sand trap holdout when you need to get over the, over the train and run to the safe room. All that's relatively easy. So we're actually skipping the grenade pouch here for extra economy, extra supplies with the... Uh, this should not be utility scavenger, this should be support scavenger. Look at that, extra healing stuff, that's what we want. Extra healing stuff, support scavenger. And etc. So that when we go into blood tunnel, we pick up experience DMT. And this is going to be our extra movement card, basically. So, between the two players, they're both going to have the effects of three cards, but only five cards are being spent to achieve that goal. So, experience DMT, fleet of foot, and then cross trainers. So, both players are going to have the same amount of stamina, as well as the same amount of movement speed. No one's going to be faster than the other here, so you, you ride or die. You know what I mean? This is a ride or die. Going into clean sweep, we now get shoulder bag. Don't be super worried about popping EMT in the safe room here, right? Like, you know, it's common for, like, open up the safe room door, you shoot someone in the foot, you pop pain pills on them or whatever. Don't be super worried about that here. Support Scavenger, what it provides most of the time is extra bandages, extra pills. Two or three here, and etc. But also, too, about EMT is that when you're playing with the bots, for the most part, the bots get full heals and full trauma heals in between missions anyways. So... EMT really doesn't isn't really going to matter too much on them. Isn't really going to matter too much on them. So just pop it on yourself, pop it on your partner, and you're good to go. Trauma recovery, extra healing, extra stamina. Even if this didn't recover trauma, trauma, I would still recommend this card because it's just so nice and flexible. Very very flexible, and that it gives extra health, and extra move speed, or extra stamina, etc. It is nice if you do have the extra supplies, feel free to just pop them on the bots anyways. The bots, as you guys know, the bots' items, healing items, and their throwables are on a timer. So when they throw a grenade, a timer begins. And at some point in the future, they'll throw that grenade again. What that timer is, I couldn't tell you. Because uh, bots need whatever certain circumstances to be met where they then go, Hey, this is a good time to throw a grenade. And they throw a grenade and they blow up two zombies. Or sometimes they throw the grenade and they blow up a tall boy. A little random, but it's all in timer. Um, when they heal you or themselves, a timer begins, and at some point, if somebody's hurt again and that timer's ended, they'll pull out their med kit again and heal again and etc. 
We have experienced the MT fleet of foot and cross trainers just building up to the crossing. Very safe, very reliable way to get past the crossing. We have shoulder bag now to get the most value out of our support scavenger. Again, at this point, you can carry extra medkits if you can afford it. And then just drop the medkits, use the pills, bandages here and there, and just sort of save the medkits for the rainy day. Totally up to you. But extra pockets. Deep pockets, and what I mean by pockets is extra inventory space. Pockets is just a very nice, safe, reliable way to just to accomplish everything, essentially. Very nice, flexible, it does everything. It's great. Now we get our double grenade pouch going into bookworms here. And we're just sort of, again, preparing for the next finale, which is going to be Barroom Blitz. So we just want extra grenades, extra pipe bombs in this instance. If you don't find, if you find that you're, if you have maybe a, a utility upgrade, you can have green or blue wire. You're not so much worried about the horde. This player can carry extra flashbangs. If zombies are not your issue, it seems like mutations end up being what kills you. Run flashbangs instead. This player will run flashbangs or pipe bombs. And then cold brew coffee for the swap speed, reload speed, extra crowd control, extra use time as far as the. You know, using med kits and things like that. Kind of nice quality, but also we're now beginning to build up essentially to the Rolling Thunder part. Marked for Death is a great card for special delivery, which is nine, because that's that card is that that map is always dark. So being able to ping things in the dark is really nice because you get the full silhouette and you can see the snitches or the mutations or whatever in the dark. Now we get Shredder. And we, with us having Shredder here, the, you can run an AR or an SMG with this deck. That would be my recommendation. AR, SMG are great for this deck. Shotgun technically works as well, but totally total preference here. We sort of complete the Wombo combo. At some point, the bots also get Marked for Death, and as far as I can tell, Marked for Death stacks to some degree. It doesn't seem like it stacks like truly like a plus... 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. It doesn't seem to stack that way from what I can tell, but either way, Marked for Death stacks. Pretty sure. Anyways, let me know if, you, if you've found otherwise. Extra bonus team damage and etc. Very, very nice. Now at this point, it's just use speed and health, right? Combat medic for the use speed. Headband magnifier for Hell's Bells. I, I prefer headband magnifier and Hell's Bells. If you don't like headband magnifier, if you hate it, if you hate being blinded, Put it last. Pick up mag headband magnifier on Rolling Thunder. Forget about it. You can pretty much switch any of these use speed cards around in these four slots. From 11 to 14, you can swap them around as you see fit, as you feel comfortable. It's all just use speed. This is all the use speed cards. And if you need it, canned goods for the extra health. Again, you just you want to get on the field cannon. Set you set your field cannon up. Get on the field cannon. You reload, unreload, re you. You can shoot, re you can blah. What am I saying? You can load the cannon, unload the cannon, shoot it super duper fast, and if the swarm ho is all over you, you have a, hopefully enough health to tank through all the damage, your teammates, your bots, which are meat shields, keep you safe and things like that. I would recommend that when you get to Rolling Thunder, you should have pipe bombs. At some point, this character should start carrying pipe bombs around. And Rolling Thunder, for sure, you should have pipe bombs. Toss the pipe bombs pre per per periodically. When you're loading the cannon, you still have control of your camera, and you're in third person, so feel free to, when you're loading the cannon, just take a quick look around, see, assess the situation, see what's going on. Pipe bomb if you need to. Right? That's it. That's your job. The other guy is going to be killing mutations or whatever. This is actually why I would... I, I left it flexible for this player to have an AR. Bots are nice in that they do kill zombies rather well, so long as both players are standing still. So if this player is running a sniper rifle, he is going to have maybe a hard time keeping the zombies off of your back as far as crowd control goes. So pipe bombs are essential for this character to carry. Um, so that's sort of the... the that's sort of the, the trade-off here. Is if you're going to go sniper rifle with the nades and damage deck, keep in mind that you're going to be more relying. You're going to be relying more on the bots to kill zombies. But other than that, you should be good to go. 
you speed, health, etc. And etc. Did I get to this? I feel like I didn't talk about this. Can of goods and health. Health, 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 health. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the future.